Why is it that the desires that we find deep in our hearts are so far from the life that we find ourselves living? There was a heart that we had as a boy, filled with wonder and dreams of battle, of adventure, beauty. And somewhere in the process of boy to man, most of us lose heart. And in order to find the life that we are still looking for, we have to go back. We have to get those lost parts of our heart back. What does it mean to be a man? What did God have in mind when he made us, when he made you? Welcome, I'm John Eldridge, and I am thrilled that you are with us. In this six-part series, we're gonna take a journey together, a journey into the most important parts of your life, a journey into the masculine heart and the masculine soul. We're gonna go straight to Genesis chapter one, and hear what he said in the beginning. With Genesis 1:26, God says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. And then here's the key point. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created us, male and female, he created them. Male and female, he created us. This is an absolutely incredible passage because right here in the beginning, it tells us who we are, it tells us what we're created as. It tells us that gender is at the level of the soul. You bear God's image as a man. You have a masculine heart, a masculine soul. And this is going to help so many men and women because we live in a time right now that's really confused about what it means to be male and female. Is all that just socially constructed? But see, if we know who we are, if we know what we were designed to be, it helps us make sense of our story and it helps us plan for our lives. This is a hard time to be a man on the earth. If we're honest, this is a pretty rough time to be male because there's a lot of confusion and anger and hostility around questions of masculinity. And so what I love is that Jesus, the kindest, most compassionate man ever, right in the middle of his redemptive mission for humanity, he quotes this passage. And he says in Matthew, haven't you heard that in the beginning, the Creator made them male and female. Male and female. Gender, the dignity, the honor of that. The most important thing you can know about yourself, my brother, is that you bear God's image, you are His Son, and that you bear His image in your masculine heart, in your masculine soul. Now, I want to add to this another passage from the book of Proverbs, chapter four, one of my favorites. Proverbs 4, 23 says, above all else, guard your heart, for from it flows the wellspring of life. It's this heart in us that allows us to love our life. Without a heart, you can't have friends. Without a heart, you can't have joy. It's your heart that allows you to fall in love it's your heart that lets you find adventures. It's your heart that gives you the passion to pursue your degree or find your career, your calling. It is the heart that enables us to know God. And here's the heartache. A lot of men are losing heart in this hour. A lot of people are losing heart. And I think part of it is because we don't know the treasure of the gift that's been put within us in Genesis 1, in the masculine heart, or in the feminine heart. So that's the journey that we're gonna to take together. And now I've counseled thousands of men over the years, and we've held conferences all over the world for tens of thousands of men. And I can tell you, 
There is something common in the masculine soul all over the world. No matter your age, no matter where you're from, there are these deep core longings that we all share together. I think if you look at the games that little boys play, I think if you look at the movies that men love, if you listen to your own daydreams and desires, you'll discover a longing for battle and for adventure and for beauty. So superheroes, childhood, who did you dream of being when you grow up? It was Superman for me, man. I thought I could actually fly. Like if I believed enough, I would actually fly. So I'd put a big pillow out in the basement and I'd run as hard as I could and jump and try to fly. And I was Superman too. I didn't want to be Superman, I was Superman. Yeah. And so I would wear my, my uniform every single day. And I even learned how to fly. What I never learned was how to land. And because I'm Superman, I just take off and I landed on the opposite wall, open my head oh, wide oh, open. No. My uncle has to take me to the hospital to get stitches. I still have the scar right here. My, my youngest one is four now yeah. and he's, Dad, will you catch me? And he knows that he can fly. He jumps with no, no hesitation whatsoever and flies over to my arms. I don't know if I'm going to be able to catch him. I'm nervous because he's getting heavier, but he knows it, yeah. yeah. Well, I remember like we couldn't ride our bikes without it being something more mythic. Like we were kids and we were the blue angels. Like we weren't riding bikes, we were fighting jets. We were jumping off the curb. Yeah. I remember we'd like do these slides and these big skid marks and the neighbor would yell at us and we're like, no, this is what bikes are for. Like, what are you talking about? I'd never actually seen the Blue Angels in person, but I knew I, I, I was a fighter pilot. Every little boy knows that he's born to be a warrior. Every little boy wants to be the Superman or Batman, Spider-Man, right? The Jedi Knight. And when the little boy dresses up in the cape or you see him in the market in his Spider-Man pajamas, let me tell you, he is not trying to be cute. He's not thinking about being adorable. He is dead serious. He is on a mission, right? Because he knows in his soul it's what he's made to be. The warrior heart is set within every boy and in every man because we bear the image of God's heart. Exodus 15, verse three. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Our God has a warrior's heart. He comes in valiant ways to fight for his people. He gave his life for us to set us free. And that heart is in us. Now, I know, I know, not every guy loves Braveheart or Gladiator, or the, you know, the war movies. That's okay. That's okay. I can guarantee you this. There is no man watching this that loves losing. Right? Like, you don't want to be the guy that's left out. You don't want to be the guy that gets fired. You want to be the guy that's winning. You want to face your battles with courage and strength and integrity. That is deep, deep in us. And that's why God gave us his warrior heart. Now, the other thing that little boys resonate with, the other thing they long for is adventure. We were teenagers and uh, lived on the plains of West Texas and you just had to be pretty creative in order to come up with something fun to do. So we run to the only one Army Navy store and say, hey, you got any parachutes? We bought a 200 foot tow rope, got my Jeep, and we got out there and just started pulling this thing and the, uh, the parachute canopy would stay open and about five steps you were airborne and just had a great ride. Now, if there was no wind, you might have to run 25 miles an hour to get airborne. <laughs> and you say you can't run that fast, but you can if you're tied onto the back of a Jeep. <laughs> we, had, we had this friend named Danny. That rope that created the lift finally went back up on top. And when it did, Danny just took off right out of our presence. He just takes off in the wind and hits out there in the field, eight guys chasing him. And finally he hits a barbed wire fence and and uh, we took Danny in and to the hospital and he told us, he says, my, my mom and dad 
told me to quit hanging around with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I, we lived in Florida for a while, then California, and we finally made it to Colorado a few years ago. And here you guys hunt, right? And there's these creatures called elk, so we gotta go elk, hunt some elk. So a buddy of mine and I said, of course, we gotta go do it, right? It started snowing, and it snowed a ton. It was the first snowfall mm -hmm. of the year, mm -hmm. and we were not prepared for that. It went down to negative two or three degrees that night. So my buddy and I are hogging, oh just cuddling with each other, and shivering all night. And for the next three days, we didn't see any animals. Not only didn't we see any elk, we didn't see squirrels, we didn't see rabbits. There was no <laughs> creature that stayed. We were in Siberia. We hiked and we hunted Siberia. Adventure is actually a spiritual longing that God put in every man. And there's different types of adventures, and you know, some guys love the outdoors, and other guys wanna start companies or plan a church, they wanna travel, but adventure is down in there, and it nourishes the heart, it nourishes the soul, and adventure shapes us, it calls us out, it, it makes us come alive because we face challenges that we don't normally face you know, in our cubicles or in our day-to-day -day lives. It nourishes us. And here's a fascinating thing. If you look at the biblical narrative, every time God gets a hold of a man, he takes him into a great adventure. Abraham, right? Leave your country, quit your career, follow me into an unknown land, and Daniel, and Noah, right? Joseph. David, the disciples, the life of Paul. I mean, every time these guys get swept up into a big story and into a big adventure. And the reason most men live lives of quiet desperation, as Thoreau said, is because they're dying of boredom. There's no great adventure to their life. So battle and adventure and the third desire, longing that you see developing in the heart of boys and then coming out in the movies that men love and in our daydreams is the longing for beauty. We were on our honeymoon and we went to Hawaii so we're sitting on the beach and I'm reading something and then I notice that she's paying attention to this guy surfing. And so I tell her, you know what, I think I'm gonna go surf a little. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> Surf, you're gonna take some surfing lessons. I'm from Colombia. I grew up in a city t at 9,000 feet of elevation, right? Never surfed in my life. The first wave that comes in, I'm still paddling out. That thing flips me and I begin to just, just fight for my life, holding on to that board. And I said, I'm down, I'm out, I'm out. So I'm walking out. I couldn't even stand on the board. I didn't learn how to surf that day. But what I did learn is the reason why these surf guys wear rash guards with these tight shirts my nipples begin to burn and I'm walking out of the water and I see my wife coming towards me and she's like, what's wrong, honey? And I'm, no, nothing, everything. No, 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 I mean, your nipples, they're bleeding. <laughs> that was me trying to fight for the beauty. Why does it feel as though the stories that come are the ones where I look like an idiot? I think of the flower I carried around in my backpack for one day in high school because I was going to ask Catherine out to be my girlfriend at the end of the day, but I kept chickening out and chickening out, and by the time I found her in the hallway, opened my backpack, it was this wilted, sad-looking rose, but I'd already I pulled her over, so I still I pulled it out, and I gave it to her anyway, and she was like, oh, thank you. And I'm like, I just, I, I have to be homeschooled now. Like, I, it's over, I just, I'm, I'm out. I can remember when I was in college and I had gone through a pretty radical conversion in my faith. And what I wanted most was to be a loving father and a loving husband. Fast forward, fell in love with Sherry and we're now 20 years in. And that was my heart's desire to be the husband she deserves and to rescue the beauty. And about halfway in that story, she was struggling with some deep anxiety and depression that um, was more than we could manage. And we did everything we knew to do. And, and in the end of that chapter, we ended up having to seek professional help in an institution. Of, um, we had to check her into a treatment facility. And I'll just never forget being in a parking lot, balling up in my truck, just in a physical ball thinking like, mm. what's happened? Like 
all I wanted was to be a good man towards a wife and children. And like, how did I find myself in this story? The longing for the beauty, the dilemma of the beauty, the desire to prove ourselves to the beauty, all of it. It's right out of Genesis. It's right out of Adam's story. Because after God gives him this fantastic world filled with adventure, then he says, but something's not right. In Genesis 2, he says, it is not good that man should be alone. Adam needs a partner. He needs a companion. He needs a lover. And there is Eve. And we are haunted by Eve, every one of us. And now I know, I know. Like sexuality and love and beauty has been a source of a lot of pain and confusion and shame for many of us. But the desire is good. The core longing down in there that God put, he has a warrior's heart. Our God is a passionate God. He's the one that thought of sunsets, right, and Tuscany and places like Tahiti. Everywhere people go on their honeymoons, God created all of that. He has a lover's heart, and he gave you a lover's heart. When we ignore these desires, they don't go away. They go underground. Why are so many men just so angry? Why does this anger come up in me in traffic and, you know, in political conversations? Why are we angry? I think it's partly because we haven't been trained as a warrior. We haven't been told that our warrior heart is good. It hasn't been blessed in us. And because we don't feel like we're winning the battles that we face. And why so many addictions? Why do so many guys get taken out? right, by that extra little something that suddenly becomes their prison. The boredom of our lives, the heartache, just the chronic disappointment. No adventure, no great story to live in. And then all the sexual issues, right? Why that and why the heartache around love and disappointment? I think it's because the heart of the lover was not cultivated in us. It wasn't trained and formed and called out that we don't find ourselves the hero in the story rescuing the beauty. Why are so many men losing heart? I think if we're honest, we have to admit that something's been lost. Something has been stolen from us. Something has been assaulted in us and something has been surrendered. And if you're gonna find the life that you were meant to live, if you're gonna find your true identity, you have got to recover the wellspring of life within you. You've got to recover this masculine heart that God has given to each one of us. That is the journey that we are going to take together. And I'm so glad you're here and I hope that you'll stay with us.